Today in grammar, we are going to do do as directed. Under do as directed, we cover almost all the areas of grammar that we have covered in middle school or in high school. Be it narration, voice, positive, negative sentences, interchange of various parts of speech, degrees of comparison, joining and splitting of sentences, etc. Okay, it's a vast area. Now to understand it properly, we need to explain it through examples. Now each question here is followed by a direction which is given within brackets and we simply have to change the sentence in form. Here I lay emphasis in the, uh, on these words in form according to the instruction provided so that is therefore it's given to as directed or as the directions provided the instructions which have been provided in the brackets within the brackets the change should always be in the form of the sentence not in the meaning okay the meaning of the original sentence should always remain intact. We will not do it miscellaneously in this uh, context. We will proceed segment wise. How? Like this. Suppose do as directed. The direction here, I have given direction and then I have given a few examples. So I am going to proceed segment wise here. See the first direction given. Here, you have to get rid of the adverb to, T double O. Now, um, what happens then? Now, the news is too good to be true. Now, when I change that, when I change that and remove the adverb to, T double O to, and I have to change, I have to remove the adverb too. So in order to do that, what am I doing here? I am saying the news is so good that it cannot be true. So when I am removing T double O two, I have to say the sentence in this way. The news is so good that it cannot be true. In this way, why have I written negative there? You have to understand this. When I am removing T double O, the sentence which I am then framing becomes negative. Because it's written, see, the news is so good that it cannot. So not, the presence of not makes it a negative sentence. So when I am removing, it becomes a negative sentence. These mangoes are too cheap to be good. Again, see, these mangoes are so cheap that they cannot be good. Similarly, the third one. He drove too fast for the police to catch. Next, he drove so fast that the police could not catch him. Another thing you have to notice that is when I'm remo removing T double O, I have to remove T O as well. And in that place, I am including so and that. So dot dot that. Okay. So the news is so good that it cannot be true. So instead of T double O and T O, I'm using so and that. So, but here you see very well that the meaning of the sentence does not change. This is what I am hinting at. The meaning should not change. Only the form of the sentence should change. Now again, the second direction is rewrite by inserting to now here you have to insert to t double o in the first direction we had to remove it now we have to insert it. the first one the bag is so heavy that i could not carry it in that in this case i am going to include t double o what will i then do i will simply remove so and that and put t double o and t o the bag was too heavy for me to carry. Now when I am doing this. The negative sentence could not. The bag was so heavy. 
that I could not. So again, that is a negative sentence. When I am removing so dot dot that and inserting T double O, I am forming a positive sentence. The bag was too heavy for me to carry. It's a positive sentence. Now, second one, he was so busy that he couldn't come. He was too busy to come. See, I am using T double O and T O instead of so dot dot that. Third, he is so truthful that he cannot be a successful lawyer. Here again, he is too truthful to become a successful lawyer. So, you have to also remember that not only am I including to and T double O, there are other changes which also take part when I am transforming sentences according to uh, the directions given. Not only those two words, but there are some words, some other words in the sentence which also changes. Remember when you were so small, you did change from singular to plural. So there, you did not only change the verb, there are other things that also changes with it. So similarly, when you change the forms, there are other words which are also affected. Now, direction number three, change from interrogative to assertive. We all know what an interrogative sentence is. A sentence which asks a question. An assertive sentence is one which uh, states facts. Now, I am I. Assertive is also known as declarative. Assertive or declarative. Now, assertive, declarative, again, can be divided into two parts, negative and positive, affirmative. Negative and affirmative. So, assertive and declarative or declarative sentences have two, uh, have two sub, uh, sub portions. One is the negative and the assertive, affirmative, sorry, affirmative. Now, coming back to this, I am, am I a traitor? I am not a traitor. Now, when I'm uh, saying, am I a traitor and I'm saying, I'm not a traitor, you'll see that the meaning has changed. No, when I'm saying, am I a traitor, I'm actually not asking a question here. I'm actually not asking a question here. When I'm saying, am I a traitor, when I'm trying to explain that here through the form, in the form of a question, I'm trying to emphasize the fact that I am really not a traitor. These type of questions do not demand an answer. These type of questions are posed for emphasis. Okay, these are posed for emphasis. But I'm saying, I, am I a traitor? Am I a traitor? Am I a traitor? Am I a So, we always say that. So, am I a traitor? I am not demanding an answer. In that case, it really means I am not a traitor. So, from an interrogative, I'm changing to assertive. I am not a traitor. Did I not warn you? That means I warned you. Can a man live forever? Answer is a man cannot live forever. Okay. So what kind of sentences these are you have to understand. Doesn't the sun set in the west? Yeah, here the sentence in the interrogative portion you see doesn't. That means that's a negative interrogative. So when I'm changing form C, the sun sets in the west. Again, look at the examples before. I am not, I am, am I a traitor? I am not a traitor. Here in the interrogative sentence, there is no negative form here. But when I am changing into assertive, you see a negative form. But here, sorry, uh, in the fourth sentence, you see within the question, there is a negative interrogative. So when I am changing form, it is simple positive form. Assertive. And I said, again I said, Assertive and declarative sentence have two parts, negative and affirmative. So, it is within uh, the boundary. So, doesn't is negative interrogative. So, I see when I'm changing form that there is no negative present here. The sun sets in the west. If you prick us, don't we bleed? If you prick us, we bleed. So, these are rhetorical questions. They do not demand an answer. They are used to make a point rather than to get an answer. 
Now, the next direction we see is change from assertive to interrogative. Now, it is the opposite. It is very surprising. That means, what am I trying to say? Isn't it very surprising? That means, am I asking a question? No. I'm just proving, trying to prove my point. I'm making a point. Is it, it is very surprising. That means, I'm, when I'm trading into a certain uh, interrogative, I'm ha introducing a negative element. Isn't it very surprising? As I said before, doesn't the sun set? It becomes positive. The sun sets in the west. And... Uh, am I a traitor? That's positive. And when it's changed, it becomes negative. I am not a traitor. Similarly, you see here, it is very surprising. Isn't it, sorry, isn't it very surprising? Um, I've written there is, I'm very sorry. It is, isn't it very surprising? It will be it. Isn't it, here, yeah, it, very surprising? Everybody knows Kapil Dev. Who does not know Kapil Dev? That is not the way to speak. Is that the way to speak? So, this is how we change. Now, next direction is change from affirmative to negative. As I said, assertive and declarative sentences have two portions, affirmative and negative. Now, within that, we'll see affirmative changing from affirmative to negative. I was, I was doubtful whether it was you. I was doubtful means I am not sure. When you are doubtful, that means you are not sure. So instead of doubtful, see I have written not sure. I was not sure whether it was you. Brutus loved Caesar. How can you change that into a negative? Brutus was not without love. That means he loved. Not without love. That means he loved. So Brutus was not without love. I am stressing on not without love. For Caesar, because that is the change I've made there. Every man has his weak points. There is no man who has no weak points. Understood? He failed to notice me when he came in. He did not notice me. Fail to notice becomes did not notice me when he came in. So these are the few changes we made. Next direction again. From negative to affirmative. Before we did from affirmative to negative. Now we do from negative to affirmative. Nobody was absent. That means everybody was present. So I'm simply see from absent I'm making it present. I'm simply using um, what do you call it? opposites, antonyms. Nobody was absent. See the area where the changes have been made. Nobody was absent. Everyone was, everybody was present. Her temper did not improve with age. Her temper became worse with age. So, did not improve means it became worse. There was no one present who did not cheer. Everyone present cheered. No one present who did not cheer means everyone cheered. So, everyone present cheered. There is no smoke without fire. Wherever there is smoke, comma, there is fire. Now you did not put punctuation marks wherever necessary. Try to make sure you use punctuations wherever necessary. So there's a comma there. There is no smoke without fire. Wherever there is smoke, comma, there is fire. You have been taught punctuation, so you should know when to use and where to use it. So, the changes and wherever the changes are, have been made, you have understood. I, I hope so you have understood. So, the next direction is interchange of exclamatory to assertive. How beautiful is night? It is an exclamatory sentence. How do we know that? Because of the exclamation mark. Now, how to make it assertive? Night is be very beautiful. How beautiful is night? Night is very beautiful. I'm simply stating a fact. What a lame excuse. It is a very lame excuse. How awkwardly he manages his sword. He manages his sword very awkward. Oh, that I had the wings of a bird. 
He desires something. I wish I had. So I wish there's a uh, this word wish shows desire. I wish I had the wings and of a bird. Okay, in the exclamatory sentence, oh that. And the assertive sentence, I wish. This word shows. I wish I had the wings of a bird. Now, change from assertive to exclamatory. The song is very sweet from assertive to exclamatory. Just the opposite. The song is very sweet. How sweet the song is. See? These are the various characteristics. See, it is ends with these ends. It ends with the verb. How sweet the song is. It is very kind of you to help me. How kind of you to help me. How kind of you to help me. Next. It is sad that he was ruined. Alas. Interjection. Alas. He was ruined. She is a very, she is a great fool. What a fool she is. Again, we see this. What a fool she is. Direction. Interchange of degrees of comparison. We have done that. I am as sorry as, sorry. I am as strong as him. He is not stronger than me. So I am as strong means he is strong and I am also as strong as he is. That means he is not stronger than me. Simply when I say, when I have to use stronger, I simply say he is not stronger than me. Than me. Than. Comparative degree usually has than. Than is usually follows the comparative degree. But we see here, what I am pointing out is say, he is as strong, I am as strong as him. That means he is not stronger than Jashi writes more interestingly than most historians. Okay. Jashi writes more interestingly than most historians. That means there are historians who do write as interestingly. So few historians write as interestingly as Joshi. Understood? So no other metal is as useful as iron. I have changed you two uh, forms. First comparative. Iron is, iron is more useful than any other metal. Uh, superlative. Iron is the most useful of all other metals. Okay. Here no other metal. That means it is the most one. Most useful, uh, useful one. So it is the most useful. In comparative degree. Iron is more useful than any other metal. Next direction, interchange of active and passive modes. We have done that ample amount of times. The people will make him president. Active, passive. The people will make him president. So, he will be made president. By whom? By the people. So, the agent goes uh, agent goes at the, towards the end. By the people. The Romans expected to conquer Carthage. Naturally, the Romans expected. So, it was expected by the Romans that they would conquer Carthage. So, it was expected by whom? By the Romans. What did they expect? That they would conquer Carthage. So, you have to ask yourself your questions and then you can frame so that the framing becomes perfect. My pocket has had been picked. Somebody has picked my pocket. My pocket has been picked. Somebody has picked my pocket. In a hand, it will be has been picked. I shall be obliged to go. Circumstances will oblige me to go. I shall be obliged to go. Now, who will oblige me? Maybe circumstances will. So, what, I, what do I say? I say, circumstances will oblige me to go. Now, uh, next direction interchange of parts of speech for that you have to understand what parts of speech is speech is okay uh, that kind of joke does not amuse me so here see i've underlined the word amuse because that's a verb here and i want you to change into a noun noun form the noun form of the word uh, the verb 
a muse. So when I change that, I have to change uh, many other portions of the sentence here. That kind of joke does not give me amusement. Does not amuse me. Does not give me amusement. So I've introduced a word here, give. So I have to also make other changes necessary. So that kind of joke does not give me amusement. So I've changed the verb form amuse into the noun form. That is how we change the various parts of speech, whichever has been asked to change. He passed an anxious hour. So again, here the word anxious has been underlined, which is an adjective, and I've asked you to change into an adverb. So he passed an anxious hour becomes he passed an hour anxiously. Anxiously is the adverb form of anxious. He fought bravely. Fought verb to a noun. He put up a brave fight. He fought bravely becomes he put up a brave fight. Next, I exclaimed his documents. Sorry, sorry. I examined his documents with care. Care. Here is a noun form. I examined his documents carefully, which I have changed into the adverb form, carefully. So this is how you change the various parts of speech. Moving on to the next direction. Change the mode of narration. Amy said to Maya, Aunt, you must take care, take us out for dinner. Here, Amy, what does she do? She asked, said to Maya, which, in, which is in direct speech, Aunt, you must take us out for dinner. Amy addressed Maya as Aunt. Now, Amy called Maya aunt. So, Amy addressed Maya as aunt and asked her to take them out for dinner. Next, he said, I have passed the examination. He said that he had passed the examination. Next, he says, see the reporting verb here. The first two have the reporting verb said. This is the third one. See the reporting verb here is says. He says, I shall go to school. He says that he will go to school. The tense does not change here because the reporting verb is not in the past tense. I said to her, you are wise. I said to her, said to her becomes told. The first sentence said, Amy said to Maya, I have made it addressed Maya. Amy addressed Maya as aunt. Here, I said to her becomes, I told her. What did I tell her? You are wise becomes that she was wise. I told her that she was wise. So, when you are changing into reported speech, you have to be very careful of the minute details because uh, you don't have negative marking in grammar. Uh, sorry, point uh, stepwise marking in grammar. Next, you see the next direction is the joining of sentences. How do we join sentences when I want to construct a simple sentence? I can use a participle. I hear a scream. There are two sentences. I hear a scream, full stop. The scream is frightening, full stop. How can I join it? Simply, I'm, you, I, I'm going to use a participle. I hear a frightening scream. How was the scream? Frightening. Okay, so it plays the role of an adjective and its root form is a verb. Okay, uh, so this is a verbal adjective, which is a participle. He saw me come, he ran away. See me come. He ran away. This is how we change. We join these two sentences. We can also use join sentences using infinitive. This this is only for uh, these are only for simple sentences. When we are supposed to construct simple sentences. Next, using infinitives. She is too weak. She cannot 
sorry she is very weak full stop she cannot walk it becomes she is too weak to walk he has two sons full stop he has to teach them full stop i missed out the full stop there full stop he has two sons to teach now using a noun of apposition she is my sister full stop her name is shimon shrimanti it becomes she is my sister comma shrimanti when you use uh, when you join sentences with the help of noun of apposition you have to be very careful about inserting these commas in their proper places without which this now in the using a noun of apposition would be worthless useless rather using absolute phrase the sun rose the fog disappeared the sun rose full stop the fog disappeared becomes the sun having risen the fog disappeared then using adverbials he will come here full stop it is sure he will surely come here have used adverbials here he will surely come here full stop this is how you use join sentences now using prepositions with a noun or gerund he is ill he still works in spite of his illness he works so preposition with a noun or with a gerund so in spite of his illness he works now that is a preposition and a noun or pronoun ঠিক আছে so she wrote poems full stop in this way she carried her living she earned her living by writing poems now joining till now we have done joining of so joining into simple sentences now joining to make a complex sentence using a noun clause he is ill it is known to her that he is ill is known to her what is known to us that he is ill so that he is ill becomes a noun clause using adjective clause this is the boy full stop he stood first in the examination this is the boy who stood first in the examination with the adjective clause here okay this is the boy who stood first in the examination who stood for that 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 portion there till the last that portion is the adjective clause using adverbial clause he is rich he does not help me he did not help me though he is rich that again is the adverbial clause though he is rich he did not help me so i here i'm joining two sentences to make a complex sentence the first i had i've used a noun clause the second i've used an adjective clause and third i've used an adverbial clause the joining into a compound sentence he is poor full stop he is honest he is poor but he is honest make haste you full stop you will be late make haste or you will be late and then we have splitting till now we did joining into complex into simple into compound now we will split sentences we will separate them there's one uh, joining what do we do uh, what did we do two separate sentences were provided and we joined them to form either a simple or a complex or a compound sentence using the various rules here in splitting see she lost her costly ring okay so how can i split what are the ideas here she she lost her costly ring now first thing she loses her ring and then what kind of ring was it it was costly so i've got two ideas here now i'm going to break these two ideas to split the sentences the first idea in my mind is i lost the ring so i lost she lost her ring that is the first idea the ring was costly so it was costly so i'm going to divide so i'm going to see how many ideas are there i'm going to divide those ideas to form two separate sentences one bearing each idea so she lost her ring full stop it was costly two separate facts 
She lost her ring. Full stop. It was awesome. Having seen the snake, she ran away again to uh, uh, facts here. The person saw the snake and the person ran away. So, she saw the snake. Full stop. She ran away. So, when you split, you have to always keep this basic thing in your mind is from the original sentence, what two facts can you get which you can separate into two different sentences? It is so simple that a child can do it. It means it's a very simple job and a child can do it. So, it is very simple. And you, now, splitting of sentences, uh, which I said, I was saying. So, having seen the snake, full stop, she ran away. She saw the snake, full stop, she ran away. Two separate ideas. You have to, you have to look for two separate facts which you can separate to make two different sentences. So, having seen the snake, full stop, she ran away. That means, she, uh, sorry, not full stop. Having seen the snake, she ran away. So, I'm, I'm going to separate into two different sentences. First, she saw the snake. That was the first fact. And then what did she do? She ran away. So, separate sentence I'm using for that. She ran away. So, she saw the snake, full stop. She ran away. It is so simple that a child can do. Again, we what do we do? We simply separate it into two parts. First, the fa first fact into first sentence. That is, the job is very simple. Whatever that is, what that, whatever job or whatever word that has been provided is a very simple one. So, it is very simple, full stop. And it is so simple that a child can do it. So, a child can do it is a separate sentence. So, it is very simple, full stop. A child can do it stop into two different sentences. So these are the various areas which we usually cover in uh, dual directed. That's all. You have to just go through them. Every Everything that you have done in grammar till, till date will be included in dual directed.